Hello everybody, John Craig here with Performance Plus Tennis. In today's video, we're gonna do a little bit of research and we're gonna do a little delve into where the power in the serve really comes from. There's a lot of different content out there and there's so many different components to the serve, but let's have a little fun here. Let's see if we could do some things that sort of identify and reveal where power comes from and where it doesn't come from. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a seat and I'm gonna serve from the bench. And we have seen coaches and players serve from on their knees and so forth and sitting down and hit the ball pretty hard. So I'm gonna try that. And we're gonna try it in a couple different ways. First, I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna put my back against the, the, the bench here so I can't move my shoulders at all. So technically what I'm doing is just isolating my arm, okay? How much power can I get if I just keep my body still and use my arm? Well, not very much, okay? Now, if I'm able to activate my shoulders while I'm sitting down, I'm just gonna be able to turn a little bit. Let's see what the difference looks like. Now I can actually accelerate quite a bit more. Where's this power coming from? Where's this extreme, is this increased power coming from? Well, it's coming from coiling. So if I'm sitting and I'm able to coil and then coil back, then I'm able to use shoulder power. So shoulder power is really critical. You cannot generate power on your serve, no matter what you do with your legs, no matter what your motion is like. If you don't get your shoulders to coil and uncoil, then you don't have any source of weight or power behind your swing. Realizing that the swing on the serve is much like throwing a ball that is triggered by rotating first and then the lag with your, with your hand or your arm and then catching up. So if I don't have this rotational action, then I have no source of power at all, okay? And so it's very, very important that we understand that shoulder power is the key to getting, to getting real power and real racketed speed on your serve. So we're gonna work on some skills and drills that are gonna help you increase that, that technique in your serve and increase your power. So if we know that the shoulder power is a key element to generating power on your serve, you can see, really simple, I can, I can stand here and stay very stationary, not use my legs at all, but if I can coil back and coil in, I can actually get pretty good power on my serve. I mean, I can, I can crack that ball, you know, 50, 60, 70 miles an hour easily just by rotating in, okay? But that's not really the ideal motion we want on the serve. What we're looking for is shoulder rotation that is more shoulder over shoulder, okay? Not just horizontal, okay? So we need to get our shoulders not only rotating back, but also rotating over one another. And that's a key part of the serve. Certainly in modern tennis, we see everyone getting into a good steep angle because they wanna get that shoulders to rotate over each other 180 degrees and get here. So we get that nice high contact with the right shoulder up for a right hander. And we, get, we go from a 45 degree angle here and we rotate around shoulder over shoulder and we get ourselves back up and our shoulders are now into about a 45 degree angle. And that's critical to do. And that's why you see the legs involved. If I don't use my legs at all and I don't do much with my left hand here, I'm really gonna be playing horizontally, okay? And if we wanna get a lot of height, a lot of power, a lot of spin, we wanna engage the whole body. So the key to getting power is activating the shoulder rotation, but really letting that originate from the legs and then pushing up into your serve, okay? So the two key elements, getting into a good strong balance, which is down in your legs, so you're creating pressure on the court, and then stretching the left hand back, which really enables you to get into this nice steep angle. Now you're in a position where you can make a big move to the ball and the racket can lag behind, and then catch up as you get into your contact point. And you can see now that my left shoulder is well down and my right shoulder is up. So not only have I rotated around, but I've also rotated shoulder over shoulder to get the height. Those are key elements and it really does originate with the legs. So how much do the legs really play a role in generating power on the serve? Quite a bit, because if I were just, say for example, swimming in a pool, in the deep end of a pool, and my legs were floating in the water and I tried to hit a serve, how much power could I generate then? Because I'd just be floating, I would just be loose and I, could, I wouldn't be able to have any sequential stability in movement. So even the shoulder rotation would be weaker because there's nothing to hold me to allow that shoulder rotation to take force. So the legs play a big part in serving. And that's why we see consistently server after server getting into a trophy position where they've got a pretty good leg flex because they want to use those legs to propel you up, okay? The other key thing about the legs, it helps elongate your swing. 
And what I mean by that is if I didn't use my legs at all, and I was right here and I had a pretty good racket drop, and I went up to contact, that length is pretty good, but I can actually lengthen that by using my legs. Because when I go down and my racket drops, it's gonna get longer as I lunge up to the ball. So I'm gonna elongate the part of the swing where the most racket head is, is developed, most importantly, up to and into the ball. So the legs play a key part of that. Now, the challenge with the legs is trying to get that sequence right because we see players that jump too soon and then we see players that jump too late. So what is the timing of the legs? Well, the legs have to drive before the racket begins to fall. So I'm in this area here and my legs are gonna push and then, and then my racket's gonna fall and it's gonna be a nice stretch behind me and up we go. When I'm serving, it almost feels like my racket bounces out of my back. There's never any attempt to create a racket scratch or back scratch. It just bounces out and it catches up to my body, which is leading and the racket arm is lagging nice and loose. So the legs have to be timed so that they push first and cause this shoulder over shoulder action and rotate and play. And then the other key element to that is what the non-dominant hand does. And you see this with every advanced player. They place the ball up, they get the hand up here, and it helps coil them, but it also helps uncoil. So if the legs are pushing and the left hand is pulling, it's gonna help really facilitate that shoulder over shoulder action and really get that energy up into the ball. So where's the power really come from? Well, it originates in the balance in the legs. Obviously, you've got to have a relaxed swing. There's so many components to it. But if you can get into a good strong balance and get a good stretch of the left hand, you're halfway home. Then just place the ball up, relax, push, pull, and go. And that's really the essence of your, your power. And your, the other components will sequence around that. And if with lots of practice, you'll start to get the timing and the coordination dialed in so you'll find easy power on your surf. Thanks so much for watching today's video and lesson. Take these concepts of the court and work on your serve. Isolate these couple of skills, power from the legs, using your non-dominant arm to create shoulder rotation to really improve the performance of your serve. Please give us a like, leave your comments down below. I'll always respond to your comments and questions. Share this video with a friend and subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. Thanks so much for watching today's lesson and we'll see you in the next video.